All right, hey guys, we are starting our cat dissection and today we're gonna to be focusing on the external anatomy. Um, and this cat um, is a female. And so we're gonna start off by identifying the key areas or parts of the body. So this is obviously the head region, here's her neck. Um, if we move down a little bit further here, this area would be the trunk, so that middle section. And then the end here, oops, would be the tail. Uh, and then um, we're going to focus here for a moment on the head region. So cats have these little uh, whiskers here called vibrissae, V-I-B-R-I-S-S-A-E. Um, and then if I look just in the middle on either side of those vibrissae, um, is there the nose. And so these openings here are the external nares or nostrils. And if I look in her eye, I noticed there is this unique white tissue. This is the nictitating membrane that I'm lifting up here with my probe. Uh, the nictitating membrane is, um, its purpose is to protect the eye. And then moving further back, I have this big ear flap here. This is called the pinna, P-I-N-N-A. And if I look down into where the pinna leads, it leads into this little ear canal called the external auditory meatus. Um, and so that's kind of all we want to focus on on the head region for right now. If I move on down to the trunk, where I kind of initially um, outlined where that area is, we can divide it into two sections. So I can feel where the edge of the ribs are, which is right around here. So anterior to the ribs, this little area here would be the thorax cavity. And then below that or posterior, that would be the abdomen. So the area not covered by the ribs. And if the skin was still intact on this female, we would notice that she had nipples, um, about uh, four or five pairs, and actually males have them as well. Um, but in females, these are openings that connect to the mammary glands that are located just underneath the skin. Um, and so since the skin is absent, obviously we're not gonna see those. And we're gonna move a little bit further down towards the rear and kind of check out the tail region. So I mentioned that this is a female. And so when I lift up the tail, you can see this opening here. So that's the entrance into the anus. Um, and then just posterior to that is another entrance right here. That's the urogenital opening. So that's the entrance into the vagina for the female. Um, it's surrounded by two flaps there, the labia majora. And in a male, they would not have that opening. They'd have two scrotal sacs there um, externally. And so that's kind of our overview. We want to kind of focus in on the muscles of the cat here. So we're going to pause for just a second to uh, orient ourselves. All right, so we are focusing now on the muscles of the abdomen. And one of the things that you will notice um, as I'm lifting up some of this tissue is this kind of like white webbing that you see there. That's called superficial fascia. So it's this connective tissue that's all over the body. It holds the fat onto the body or to the muscle, and it also holds different layers of muscles um, on top of each other. And so we wanna first look at these abdominal muscles here. So this first layer that we're gonna look at is called the external oblique. So if you pay close attention, you can notice the angle that the fibers of the muscles are running. So they're running in this direction here. And then if I lift this up and I've kind of cut it away and separated it, I can see the internal oblique. So again, notice that these muscle fibers, um, the direction that they're going, so this direction here. The internal obliques, these are muscles that are running um, in this direction here. Uh, and so if I peel even that layer back, I can see another layer called the transversus abdominis. So that layer there. So there's three layers here that we looked at. External obliques, internal obliques, transverse abdominis. And if I continue looking at the abdo abdominal area, and I'm going to turn my cat just a little bit, um, I can see um, strips of muscles found on either side of what we call the linea alba. So you can make out this faint white line that's running down the midline here. We kind of saw that in the shark also. This is the linea alba. And on either side of that, I see a strip of muscles here, and I see another strip of muscles on this side. So those make up, the, those are the rectus abdominis muscles on either side. So if I move up here to now the chest region, so we're gonna go there next. 
Uh, the first muscle that I'm going to look at, and I'm going to stretch the front limbs of the cat apart. And you can see that there's this muscle running right along the middle here um, from one elbow all the way clear to the other side. And that's going to be called the pecto antebrachialis. So it helps to pull the front limbs towards the center of the body. So if the cat were to make that motion, that muscle contracts to make that happen. Um, and then just posterior to the pecto antebrachialis is going to be the pectoralis major. So you can kind of see the outline of this little V-shaped muscle there. So you can see the border of it right here. So this is the pectoralis major. And then even posterior to that would be the pectoralis minor. So it is another V-shaped muscle, but a deeper V. And then further down, you can see an even deeper V-shape here. And this is called the zitha humoralis. So this is the most posterior chest muscle and it is responsible also for drawing the front limbs towards the chest. So we're going to pause here for a second to orient ourselves to see some of the other muscles in this area. All right, so now we are in the neck region, and you see some blue and pink coloring there, and that's actually blue and pink latex that was injected into the arteries and veins to make them a little bit easier to see when we get to the circulatory system. But for now, we want to focus on the muscles that are in the neck and the throat region, and so you have this muscle here that kind of forms this V just on top of that pecto antebrachialis muscle that we talked about. So you can see part of it here and part of it here. And I know that this neck is a little bit kind of mangled, so it makes it difficult to see the clear borders of that muscle. But that muscle is called the sternomastoid. So it forms this V shape pointing to the pectoralis major and it flexes the chin um, to the chest to help to rotate the head. The sternomastoid is actually two muscles that pass along the trachea. So there's actually one over here and one on the other side. And again, the neck is a little bit mangled, so it's hard to make out the clear borders of that muscle. But these are muscles that run right on top of the trachea, which would be just behind there. You can kind of see part of the trachea right there. Um, so these are muscles that are on top of there. The masseter muscle is this huge jaw muscle right here. So you can kind of see this big bulge here. So that's the curved outer kind of posterior border of that muscle. Um, so that's the master. And then going more anterior, if I move this little flap of skin out of the way, I can see another muscle just um, anterior to that. And that's the temporalis muscle. Um, it is covered by this really tough layer of shiny fascia. So this little connective tissue that's there. Um, and then if we kind of look more medially here, I can see two muscles that are kind of doing an upside down V shape. So you can see the board of this one here and the top of that muscle. And you can see another one that's over there. These muscles are called the digastric muscles. So they form an upside down V that points to the tip of the lower jaw. And then in the middle of that is a thin sheet of muscle that kind of goes across that little inner V. And that part is called the mylohyoid. So it is important in being able to allow the cat to swallow and also produce sound. All right, so we flipped our cat over on the side so that we can see some of these other muscles that are on the back and shoulder region. And so you see this one big, huge kind of like flap of a muscle, and there's actually a ton of fat kind of um, underneath this layer here. But this big muscle here is called the latissimus dorsi. So it connects the cat's armpit pit region, so this area up underneath here, um, and it allows the um, rotating of the front limb. It also is a powerful rotator of the trunk or this middle section here. And then we have the trapezius muscle that kind of forms this area that kind of comes down and forms a V in the back. So for bodybuilders, when they build that area up, it's what forms that kind of like upside down triangle that's at the top of their back area. So that's the trapezius muscle. It actually has three different parts that all fan out from the shoulder along the back and it covers the shoulder blades and they actually function to draw the clavicle which is that bone right here, kind of our collarbone, dorsally and towards the head. And then the last muscle we're going to look at in this area is the deltoid. So that's this muscle here. You can see the border of it. So it's the shoulder muscle. It also has three parts, but only two of them are visible. You can kind of see this section here and then another section kind of on top of that. Uh, and so they help the cat to be able to flex the shoulder. So since we're already here, um, in this area underneath or on the back of the front limb of the cat is the triceps brachii. So it's like our 
uh, tricep muscle that's on the back of our arm. And it is the muscle that helps to be able to straighten the cat's front leg. So you can imagine that these muscles constrict, that it kind of pulls the front limb straight. And one of the other muscles that we're gonna look at here is just underneath this antibrachialis muscle. So if we were to kind of separate the connective tissue here, you can see there's another muscle that's just underneath here, this muscle right there, that's actually the biceps brachii. And so um, if we were to cut this pecto antibrachialis muscle and kind of peel it back, you can see the top part of it a little bit better, but it runs underneath this muscle and it's kind of on the front part of this forelimb. And it is what allows the um, cat to be able to bend its front leg. So it does the opposite motion of the uh, triceps brachii. So the triceps brachii would straighten the front limb like this, and then the biceps brachii, which is underneath that pectoral antibrachialis muscle, when it contracts, it would allow the muscle to flex and bend the arm. All right, so last area that we're going to be looking at is the leg region or the rear limb. And the first muscle we want to look at is the sartorius muscle. And so that is actually this thin muscle here that's just kind of on top of the thigh. And it looks really small, but if we flip the leg over so you can see the inner part of that, you can see it's actually this huge muscle that kind of makes up the bulk of this inner thigh of the cat. So sartorius muscle, you can see it here on the inner thigh, but you can also see the top of that muscle on top of the thigh. So that's the sartorius muscle. We also have a muscle that's um, kind of fan-shaped here that's called the tensor fascia lata. And so... Um, it is part of the side of the leg and actually helps to adduct or rotate the thigh. And then in this area here, we have the gluteus medius, which is actually not on your list of structures that you needed to know, but just um, going more medially um, compared to where that gluteus medius muscle is, is the gluteus maximus muscle. Um, and so a lot of you guys have probably heard of that muscle and that's part of our rear end. Um, it is just above another muscle that's called the caudal femoralis. So that's this muscle right here, this long skinny one, and it functions to abduct the thigh. Uh, and you sometimes um, are, it's a little bit tricky to find it. I had to remove a lot of really thick fascia or that connective tissue to be able to expose it. So that's the caudal femoralis. Um, and then if we look just on the back of the leg, this other huge sheet of muscle here, this is called the biceps femoris. So that's very different than the biceps uh, that we saw that were on the front limb. Um, and so we're looking here on the rear leg again. So this is the biceps femoris. And then on the inside of the thigh, um, so remember we said this was the gracilis muscle, and then back, I'm sorry, this was the um, sartorius muscle. And then back behind here is a muscle that we call the gracilis muscle. So it runs along the inner margin of the thigh. It's actually responsible for hip addu um, adduction and it helps with knee flexion. And then the last two muscles that we're looking at are on what would be comparable to our shin. So on the front of the lower part of the leg is this muscle here. So this would be our tibialis anterior. So it's found on the front of the shin, it flexes the foot. So you can imagine when this contracts, that it lifts the foot up like that. Um, and if you've ever had shin splints, this is actually the muscle that would have been involved in that. And then the last muscle that we're looking at, it would be similar to our calf muscle. It's called the gastronemus muscle. So it is back here in the rear of the back of the leg. So it would be the same as our calf muscle. Um, and so this functions to extend the foot. So you can imagine that this muscle contracts, then it would pull the limb this direction and extend the foot out. So those are the muscles. Uh, take some time to go back and review the video and then uh, make sure that you um, know those different muscles that are on the list before you take the review quiz. There'll be some images on there that you'll have to identify.